spread your awareness around the body. Sometimes we talk about getting one spot comfortable and then spreading your awareness. Other times, things don't get comfortable until you take the whole body into consideration. And things begin to fall into place. So try starting with the whole body first. Be aware of everything from the head down to the feet. Put special emphasis on the feet because we tend to be so much in our heads. All those screens that we look at all the time, they really emphasize the information that comes in through the eyes. And our awareness of the body, down through the arms, and torso, legs, begins to atrophy. So emphasize the extremities, your hands, feet, legs, arms. And think of breathing with all those parts of the body. Some people say they can't feel any breath energy there to begin with, but it's there. So you have to allow yourself to imagine that it's there. And then tell yourself, these sensations I feel in my body, how are they related to the breath? It's not like there's nothing there. You're just learning how to apply the label of breath to what you already feel. And then with the thought that what you already feel should flow easily. Notice where there are obstructions. Think of those obstructions dissolving away. You can locate the muscle that's causing the obstruction, think of it relaxing. You have a sense of everything breathing together, coming in, going out, coming in, going out. And then just learn how to stay here. As John Fung used to say, there are three steps to the meditation. One is doing it, the second is maintaining it, the third is putting it to use. And for a lot of people, the maintaining is hard. We're so used to moving on to the next thing, the next thing, clicking on the next thing, clicking on the next thing. And here we're going to stay, and nothing much seems to be happening at first. It's like going into a room where it's very bright, and your eyes haven't adjusted yet, and you don't see anything because the light is so bright. You have to wait a while for things to adjust, and then you begin to see there are things going on here, both in the body and in the mind. And those are the things you want to watch. Some of them are potentials for well-being, some of them are potentials for unwell-being, and you have to learn how to read them. If we haven't been meditating, we skip to the full-blown thoughts, but here we're, begin we're learning how to see the beginnings of thoughts. And part of the mind will say, well, I want to see what that thought is about, I want to see what this thought is about. Well, part of the time the thought is about something, other times there's just a stirring, and you slap whatever label you want to on it and make it a thought about something. You want to be able to see that. And when you can see that, then you get a lot more control over your thinking. So there's a lot to see here, simply that it's very subtle. But if you get into the whole body, it takes you out of your normal point of view, your normal perspective, which is the perspective of ignorance. And you start now with a different perspective. It may not be knowledge yet, but at least it's conviction. As the Buddha said, when you start gaining conviction in the path, that's when things begin to clear up. And that can turn into knowledge if you're convinced of the right things. So here we're convinced that we really should get to know our own minds, because what our minds are doing can make the difference between whether we're going to suffer or not. Now, it's not so much things outside that make us suffer, it's what the mind itself is doing. That's why the Buddha said the mind is the forerunner of all things. Your happiness, your pleasure, your pain, your sorrow. These all come from within the mind. And so here you're looking at the potentials for those things as they blip, blip, blip here and there. And you want to get to recognize them, understand how it is that you can create either suffering or not suffering out of the same raw materials often. And then ask yourself, why create suffering? Well, it's because you're not paying attention and you don't understand things, you haven't seen them thoroughly. So give yourself a chance to see these things thoroughly. And that can make a huge difference in the extent to which you create suffering or 
and follow the path away from suffering. This is where all the action is, right here. So many times we're afraid of what they call fear of missing out, what someone else is doing someplace else. What you really want to be afraid of is missing out on what you're doing right here. Because that's the arbitrator for how your life is going to go.